called the dining room table. She's cute, it's the holidays, it's her big day. I'm an interior designer and I'm gonna walk you through how to decorate this table. I've put together three different tablescapes and I'm going to show you how to achieve those three different looks. Say you've inherited your grandmother's silverware. We're gonna build a look around the silverware. This whole set is giving for me just iconic, super ornamental, traditional. Silver is a live finish. A living finish is one where the actual surface is going to change with exposure to oxygen or exposure to different surfaces and chemicals in our environment. She's alive, y'all, she's changing. So the next tip is developing a color palette. I wanna build around a tartan tablecloth. Tartan to me is iconic holiday. It's red in this case, and it's so nubby, and the wool is so cozy and everything about it is just festive to me. We have this really traditional china. I'm deciding between this pattern and this white. The thing is that I wanna do holiday and I wanna do traditional holiday and this pattern china clashes with the tartan. And that means white plates. Generally speaking, when you fold something, you're gonna get creases. You can run the crease along where the table edge is and no one will ever know. Generally, once something has dried, crinkled, you need to get it a little bit damp in order to be able to smooth this out. The wetness gets the creases out because basically if it has dried in a certain direction, you need something that allows the fabric to reshape itself. And it's not perfect. Not everything's perfect. We're not perfect. We're humans. We're beautifully imperfect. So we're just gonna let her be. And you'll never know the difference. We're going for a traditional table setting, and there are so many old school rules about it. In fact, there are even entire books that teach you all the ways that you are doing things wrong. First, to indicate where the chairs go, I'm gonna choose either a charger or a placemat. Since I want my white plates to stand out, I'm gonna go with the charger. We're doing just a dinner plate and a salad plate. We also have a butter plate, and that's gonna go to the left. When it comes to silverware, it's pretty much outside in, what do you eat with first? Salad starts and then we have entree, so that means that the salad is on the outside. It's also the baby fork, so things kind of get bigger and taller as they go toward the plates. Spoon and then your entree knife. Blades always go toward your plates. I love a white napkin for a traditional table setting. It is connoting of cleanness. There's lots of different ways to handle the napkin. You can have it just folded and placed neatly on top of your plates. You can also put the napkin under your silverware, but I personally love a ring. I love a ring. You take a square napkin, you fold it into a triangle, and then you basically roll it almost like a croissant. I don't know, I've never baked. And then you put the ring over it. It allows you to have kind of a dramatic and long napkin experience. That's very important for my guests, napkin experiences. The reason I like doing it this way is there's a beautiful symmetry that you create on the table. Next up, glassware. In a traditional place setting, there is a different glass for every drink. Red wine and white wine glasses are shaped differently because red wines generally have a much larger bouquet and take a bit more time and more oxygen to wake up. You can either form the glasses in a linear fashion or in a grouping. If you're serving champagne, you can choose between a coupe and a flute, but for today, we're gonna use the flute. We actually need to get rid of this coupe glass. We have a lot of centerpiece options here. I love fruit for a centerpiece because one, it's very seasonal, it connotes freshness, and you can make it colorful. Fruit's colorful. Here we wanna make sure that all of our metals are matching, so there's lots of options to choose from in silver. And between these two candlestick holders, I think I'm gonna go with the individual candlesticks. And the reason for that is because then I can have it sit one on either side of my fruit dish. Another pro tip, non-scented candles, very important. If you get a fragrance candle, it will compete with the smell of the food on the table. Choices, um, we're gonna go with this one. It's cute. I love the idea that the salt and the sugar were part of the same set. A lot of traditional dishware comes in a set. And then don't forget a water pitcher. This is very adorable and it's kind of fun. I love that it's a squiggle squangle. It almost feels like the inverse of my candlestick. The one thing about a centerpiece is don't make them so tall, whether they're florals, whether they're fruit. If it's too tall, I can't see you from across the table. So that's traditional.
traditional was very much about pulling from sets. The salt and pepper shakers match with the sugar, which matches with the plates. On the flip side, mix and match is the art and science of adorning an entire table or a tablescape with lots of items that go together and feel like they make sense together, but they're not all part of the same set. As a jumping off point, one of the things that we can do is starting with a menu. Design your tablescape around what you're gonna serve that night. I personally love designing around shared food. I love a family style meal where things are coming off of big bowls, big pots on the table, and then everyone sort of serves themselves, and that's what we're gonna do today. When I'm starting a modern table setting, I do think about the tablecloth first. It is sort of the foundation of everything that goes on top of it. I went with a neutral tablecloth because I want everything else to really stand out. Each of these modern options for placemats are pretty bold and fabulous. What I love about texture in design is that it allows you to not have to rely only on color and pattern to make something visually interesting. This is both experientially lovely because you can touch it and it's fun, and it's also a way to stay neutral but still be interesting. All three of these placemats are so much fun. I love this one for a more mellow, neutral overall vibe. I love the energy of this pattern, but I'm thinking that I really like this translucent one for all of my very special friends who are very messy and like to spill. Now we're choosing napkins. I like to use cloth napkins instead of paper napkins because it's more luxurious. It's more lovely and permanent and nice, and also it's sustainable. If you're serving great food, you wanna make sure that every part of what your guests touch is fantastic. A tip for how to choose your napkins, take the material and rub it against the inside of your arm, not your fingertips, but the inside of your arm. If it's too scratchy here, you're gonna hate wiping your face with it. I'm gonna choose this one. I love how the purple works off of all the other colors I have going on so far. Now we're choosing dinnerware. When shopping for modern dishware, look for handmade, look for the craftsmanship. And in fact, sometimes you'll even see bowls where the finger from the pottery wheel is shown. These plates are both very modern, very neutral, but very different. I'm gonna choose the stoneware. I like that very much for what I'm going to be serving, and I love how the colors are all playing with one another right now. I'm also going to bring in a menu and a place card. If you're hosting a dinner party where people might not know each other, I always like to put the name on both sides so that everyone knows where they're sitting and everyone knows who they're sitting across from. Also a great tip if you don't remember people's names very easily. Who's Maria? Not me. So now, drinkware. You might think of drinkware as clear, but actually there's a long and fabulous history of translucent colored drinkware. Colorful drinkware actually has a very interesting history, starting with depression glass. That was a way to distinguish from crystal, as we saw before. There were different colors, in fact, even neon green made with uranium. She was radioactive, and she still is. Isotopes last forever. I actually love this amber glass, but I already know that we're going to be using this amber decanter, and that's too matchy. We're mixing. I'm gonna pick this smoked gray. To be totally honest, there's so many times that I break or my friends break my stemware or my glasses, and that's okay. As long as things are mix and match and something breaks, it's not a big deal because it already didn't match with anything else. Ma'am? Maria is back, y'all. She's pissed. And next, serveware. Serveware is such a good centerpiece because it's casual and it's about everyone sharing from the same vessel. Since we're serving pasta, I love the idea of the pasta being placed on the table in the pot it was cooked in, rather than the florals or a fruit bowl being the star of the show. The food is the star of the show. And it also has the same kind of texture as the earthenware plates that we're going with. I'm gonna serve my salad in this pink bowl. I also really love mixing metals in a modern table setting. So this is brass, and then we've actually got silver silverware on the table. I love a tiny bowl and a tiny ramekin. Anytime you're gonna serve anything that comes in a package, take it out of the packaging and put it in an actual dish. A few of these items I actually picked up from my travels, and that's such a nice way to share your travel experiences with guests. Another lovely thing to do is to pour your wine into a decanter and serve it there. And since we're serving wine at the table, how about a really fun corkscrew? I don't know how to use it. Somebody else opens my wine for me, but it's really cute. When I'm styling, I really like candles that are kind of fun. Funny textures are really fun. This is very clearly a mix and match. You've got clear glass with colorful glass, different textures, shiny and glossy, and all kinds of berries and nuts all over the table. 
Next, I'm gonna show you all what it feels like to fully commit to a theme. And this theme is Christmas. Kitsch to me is humor at the table and in decor. Just in general, kitsch is a way for you to be able to be tacky, but on purpose and with style. I'm starting centerpiece first this time. There's a lot going on on this table. A lot of different centerpiece ideas that are possible. In general, things in a bowl are very iconic to a centerpiece. You could put lemons in a bowl, ornaments in a bowl, wine corks, pine cones, seashells that you found on vacation. Bringing the outdoors in, especially in the winter time. Thinking of things like this lovely stump slice. And another thing, when you're shopping for a Christmas tree, you can always grab some of the extra branches, the boughs, and lay them out on the table as another centerpiece. I'm definitely going to choose Senor Nutcracker. I like that guy. I like this because it's another checker element. I have to go with an element of cabbageware, so I'm gonna choose this lemon bowl. Cabbageware is a vintage item that just keeps resurfacing. It's funny, sparkly, and delightful. Literally looking like a cabbage. I'm really excited about this place setting. Remember this pattern china? I think it looks really good over this gold charger, over this red tablecloth. And since there's a lot going on in this tablescape, we've got more of a simple minimalist glassware, but it's still in a really modern and playful silhouette. We're also mixing metals aggressively at this table. We've got silver flatware, we have a gold charger, we have gold rim pattern wear, and then we also have these funny little snowman shaped silver salt and pepper shakers. And it wouldn't be a kitsch Christmas without a kitsch Christmas tree napkin holder. How cute is that? The other thing you can do with kitsch is have super themed paper napkins. And I love a name card that can actually be a cute little party favor to take home. And it's so cute. This table setting is super kitsch. It's very Christmas, it's very pattern heavy, and it's funny. Like I wanna sit at this table and have a funny dinner with funny friends and laugh, ha ha ha. I hope what you take away from this video is that anything that you have totally belongs on the table. Just think about what you wanna share with your friends and loved ones. Anything goes, nothing's too serious. And if it's feeling too serious, remember that any of the rules of traditional, modern, or kitsch are just guideposts. You really can't go wrong. It's really about food and company and sharing good meals with good loved ones and everything else is just design.